Okay, now we're going to do 2004, uh, question number two from the AP Calculus exam. So it says, let f and g be the functions given by f of x equals 2x minus, or times 1 minus x, and g of x equals 3 times x minus 1 times square root of x uh, between 0 and 1. The graphs of f and g are shown in the figure. Part A says, find the area of the shaded region enclosed by the graphs of f and g. All right, so part A is not too bad. Uh, all you do is your area is going to be your top curve minus your bottom curve. So you can actually just write f of x minus g of x going from 0 to 1. So your x values were between 0 and 1, dx. Okay, usually if you write it this way first, that's nice because you're not missing a point. Uh, if you had left off, like, let's say the x and the f of x or something like that, if you made a simple error just because you were nervous on the test. Okay, so this is 0 to 1. So I would always write it this way first and then write you really must see it, the rest of it. Okay. Okay, this is a calculator question, so you can just plug this in to your finite integration. So math 9. So hit math 9, plug it all in. Uh, I went ahead and did this already. So you should get 1.133 as your answer. Part B says, find the volume of the solid generated when the shaded region enclosed by the graphs of f and g is revol revolved around the horizontal line y equals 2. All right, so y equals 2 is up here, because here's y equals 1, so it's up at the top. Okay, so I always think if I'm going around y equals 2, that looks like the x-axis. It's horizontal. So when I'm using the disk or washer method, with around the x-axis, I always wanted everything in terms of x. So I wanted to integrate with respect to x. So when I look at this, I start from my, my line, y equals 2 that I'm revolving around, and I go to the innermost curve. That's going to be little r. So that's my inner radius. So it's 2 minus f of x. All right, my outer radius, you start from there, and you go all the way to the outermost part. So that's 2 minus g of x. So when I set up my volume, it's just going to be pi times outer radius squared minus pi times inner radius squared. So I have pi 2 minus g of x squared minus 2 minus f of x squared dx. My x values still go from 0 to 1. Okay, so you'd set up like that. Now what might be useful is if you put f of x in for y1, g of x in for y2 on your calculator, so when you keep referring to them, you can just put y1 and y2 in as you're integrating. So if I was going to put this into my calculator, I would have those in for y1 and y2, and I would just write f int. I'd have 2 minus y2 squared minus 2 minus y1 squared. I'd go from 0 to 1, so I'd do x comma 0 to 1. I'd hit enter, and then I'd multiply by that pi outside. So when you do that, you should get 16.179. So 16.179. Right, you don't have to write your setup. I was just writing that so you can see it. All right, now part C. This one looks a little bit harder. So part C says, let h be the function given by h of x equals kx times 1 minus x between 0 and 1. For each k greater than 0, the region not shown, enclosed by h and g is the base of a solid with square cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis. Okay, so we have see, so the k is between 0 and 1. It looks very similar to f of x, only k is between 0 and 1, it's not 2. So I think what happens is it's just a, you can check on your calculator, but it looks like f of x, but only it's shrunk a little bit. It's not stretched out as far. 
So it says for each k is greater than 0, let's see, it's, it's the base of a solid with square cross section perpendicular to x. Okay, so here's my region. That's the base of it. So I want to find this length here, and then I want to make it a square. So we kind of did some of these with manila folders in class. So we have these squares coming up off of it. Okay, and each cross section is that particular size. So whatever length it was, it's that size. All right, so for my length, it's just going to be h of x minus g of x. That's the length. And then the height is just the same thing. So you're just going to square it. Okay, so. So when I add up all of these cross-section areas, that's going to give you the volume. So it's going to be h of x minus g of x. So that was the length times the height, so square it. And your x values still go from 0 to 1. Okay, if you really wanted to see what that is written out, um, your h of x was kx times 1 minus x minus 3 times x minus 1 times the square root of x. All of that squared dx. Okay, we said we want to find, it says there is a value of k for which the volume of the solid is equal to 15. Write but do not solve an equation. So we wanted the volume, it says the volume of the solid is equal to 15. So that means we would just have all of this equals 15. Okay, this would be your equation here. Okay. So let's see where the different points are for this equation. Or for this problem, I mean. So part, part A, you got one point for having the integral set up correctly. So even if you just had f of x minus g of x, and then from 0 to 1, that's set up correctly one point for the answer. Like I said, if you had left off like the x or the 3 or something when you wrote it out this way, and you hadn't written that first step, you would lose a point because you had just messed up, you had messed up part of the uh, integral. Part b, you get one point for the limits and constants, so the pi and the 0 to 1. Two points for having the correct integrand, so the inside part here. One point for your answer. And part c, you get two points for having the correct integrand set up and one point for your answer at the end, so having the whole equation written out.